Hi, it's Jennifer here today, and I am super excited because I am about to head out on a little mini Catholic road trip to see an old friend of mine to finally meet in person, St. Jude. Yes, that's St. Jude the Apostle, one of the original 12, also known as St. Jude Thaddeus. A major relic of his is touring the United States this year. It's making a hundred stops in a hundred different cities, and he's sort of close to me, so I am finally going to go see him in person. I am a St. Jude fan from way back. He is the patron of impossible causes and desperate cases, so he has definitely helped me out throughout the years. Here is my old battered St. Jude prayer card with the Novena to St. Jude on the back. And in order to get ready for this trip, I've been so excited all week. I've pulled out a couple of my favorite books about St. Jude. Well, actually, this one is my favorite, St. Jude, A Friend in Hard Times by Mike Aquilina III. And then another book I had, I enjoyed reading it, probably not my favorite um, Jude by Liz Trotta. So there aren't a lot of books about St. Jude out there. So I'm hoping today that at the exhibit they will have more and I can add to my library. The relic that's on display today is actually part of St. Jude's body. It's a piece of his forearm that has been venerated since ancient times as actually belonging to the apostle. So wow, yeah, I'm really excited. Let's hit the road. Okay, so I made it to the church where the relic is going to be displayed. I'm a little excited. I got here a little early, like 30, 45 minutes early, because I thought there might be a line or something. And there is, there is a long line. So I'm going to go get in line. It's a really long line. It's wrapping all the way around the building. So you can see the line is wrapping all the way around the church. And while I was waiting in line, I had a book with me about St. Cabrini, Mother Cabrini, so I could read about her since we were going to see a movie about her soon. And then finally it was time to go inside the church, which is very beautiful. And yes, they did have books and DVDs and all kinds of things about St. Jude, so more about that later. Inside the main church, there were gigantic posters all about St. Jude, about his relics, about his life. We could read those while we were in line. This one was a nice biography of him. And then there was this fun story about St. Jude and the King of Odessa and how Jesus healed him of leprosy. Kate and I did a video about that and I'll link it below for you. And the information about the relics was very helpful. This explained how to venerate the relics, which just means to honor them. And these posters are really a great way to pass the time while we were standing in line. I really like this modern image of St. Jude. I think that was done fairly recently. And here was the relic. We couldn't stand in front of it for very long because of the crowd, but I tried to get some good shots for you. So I have just come out from seeing the relic. That was very moving. Um, it was a fragment of his bone and it was just I can't even describe the feeling, like seeing this was actually part of him. What a blessing. I got so excited that I'm not even walking to the right parking lot. I don't even know where my car is, but I'll, I'll find it. Oh wow, that was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I will say that. When we went inside, we were not able to spend very long in front of the relic because the, an endless crowd of people have come to see it. And I was hoping to like go back in line again, but I don't know if I want to, you know, wait in the long line again because it's not getting shorter, it's just getting longer. It did have a book for sale. I think this book was written just for the relic tour, and I will do a downshot of it so you can see inside. Um, I got one for myself and I got one for the church library. So that was awesome. Also, I was able to get um, several prayer cards of St. Jude and touch those to the relic case. So now these are 
third class relics of St. Jude. I have several people that I'm giving these to, so I was really happy about that. I was able to touch my miraculous medal to the relic case also. So now this is the same medal that I took with me when I went to see uh, Carlo Acutis's relic. So now I have, like, I don't know, is that a double third class relic now because it's St. Jude and Carlo Acutis, great friends in heaven. And then I also was able to have my rosary touch to the relic case. So it was a big day for me. What a great way to start Lent, right? But let's talk about relics for a minute. Now, Catholics venerate relics of saints, and that could be a first-class relic, part of the saint himself or herself, or it could be something that the saint owned, like a prayer book or a piece of cloth that they wore, or it could be a third-class relic, and that is something that was touched to an item that the saint owned or to you know the bones of the saint, that type of thing. The Catholic Church definitely venerates relics, which is very different from worshiping. We only worship God. We don't worship Mary or the saints. If you research the Catholic faith with a credible source, even the barest amount of research will quickly tell you that we don't worship anyone but God, anything or anyone. So I just want to throw that out there and make that clear. But one neat thing about the tradition of praying to St. Jude is that if you have a prayer answered by him, then traditionally you will publish it. Like it used to be in the newspaper or, you know, maybe be in a magazine or nowadays I think you could just make an announcement online. So I've actually done that before, like way back in the day. I mean, St. Jude and I go way back. I actually placed a classified ad at one time thanking St. Jude for a problem that he helped me with. So he's a really fun saint to get to know. Whew, okay, so I made it back home. I got a little bit lost on the way home, so I did a little wandering in the desert. Um, definitely it turned into a bona fide road trip. Driving home, I was really thinking about, you know, seeing this fragment. You know, it wasn't a big piece of the bone. It was, you know, like maybe this big, but it, it was bright white and this beautiful and the image of it is kind of burned into my brain. And I was just thinking driving home, wow, you know, yeah, he saw Jesus. He lived and walked and worked and talked and ate and slept with Jesus for years. But it was just such an amazing experience to be able to go there and see the relic in person. Part of the amazing thing for me was that, you know, usually when I go on these road trips, Kate is with me. She had to work today. Or I have another friend who usually goes with me. She had company today and then another friend and another friend. Nobody could make it. So I went by myself, which is fine. But then when I walked up to to the church right there in front of me in line was another friend of mine. I mean, we couldn't have planned to meet there and met up any more easily or in a more timely manner. It was, you know, as if somebody else arranged this, you know, I was not by myself. It would have been fine if I had been, but it was just kind of a funny, you know, like, wow, you know, someone is in charge of this and it's not me. Anyway, I'm always so happy that I'm Catholic. I'm always so glad. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for coming along with me on this road trip. If you have seen the Relic of St. Jude or you're going to go see it, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your experience. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Another Catholic road trip in the books. I'll see you next time. Bye.